if we want to stay here forever, he's not going to do anything. But what he does is, he makes this material world an uncomfortable place. <laughs> he puts so many obstacles in the way of our material enjoyment. And so we encounter so many inconveniences, so many uh, unexpected problems, uh, losses. We have this great plan, and we think it's really going to work, and then we come around the corner and, oops, the whole thing, the whole thing blows up. <laughs> We're not so intelligent. Our intelligence is very limited. And then, of course, we have to change the body periodically. And that just throws a monkey wrench into our whole program, doesn't it? So, in the material world, there's always some obstacle, some limitation, some imperfection, uh, some problem that gets in the way of our enjoyment. But in the spiritual world, there are no such obstacles because Krishna is transcendental and he has everything and he's the source of everything. He has unlimited potency, unlimited energy. Uh, so he is not acting out of desire. He is acting only out of love. So if we repose our loving energy in Krishna alone, Sarva Dharman Purityajja, Mam Ekam Sharanam Raja, Krishna said, give up all other varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. He said, I will protect you. Aham Tvang Sarva Papebyo Mokshayesh Yami. I will remove all the sinful reactions. Masucha, don't worry. See, so if we trust Krishna, if we understand Krishna's attitude, Krishna's character, that when we approach him and we try our best, even though it's imperfect, even though it's limited, even though uh, we make so many offenses and so on, if we just try to satisfy him a little bit, <laughs> sincerely from the heart, then we automatically get his affection, his love, and he takes care of us in so many ways. This is our experience. So try this process, karma yoga. We're all conditioned to working for some material result. I do this work, and then I get some result. We go to work, and then we get paid. Huh? Or I go to the marketplace and I sell something and I get money for it. We're all conditioned like that because that's how the material world works. So when we hear something like, well, you should try this karma yoga, it becomes, we become skeptical and we think, well, this is just an excuse for, to be controlled by some religious process. Or this is just an excuse to be... Uh, to serve some organization, some religion. Uh -huh. But we're not talking like that. We're saying, take the things that you're doing anyway, uh, your job, your material activities, uh, maybe you're a student, or maybe you're in family life, maybe you're retired, uh, or maybe you're even renounced from this material world uh, because of some cultivation of wisdom or spiritual life. Well, that's all right. Take whatever you do and use that to satisfy Krishna from your heart. Not just externally. Not just because somebody said to do it. Not just because you read in Bhagavad Gita. Although that now we're getting there. <laughs> because Bhagavad Gita is Krishna. No, but because you intend, you as a person, as a conscious living entity, uh, as a sovereign individual, with your own free will, you intend that I want to make Krishna happy. I want to try to follow Krishna's instruction. Uh -huh. And if you act from that intention and offer the results of your activity to Krishna in his service, then I guarantee everything in your life is going to start to go 200% better. Uh -huh. This is immediate, too. It's not like you have to wait for it. Uh, it's not like, you know, you wait till the end of the year, then you file your taxes. <laughs> no. No. 
But Krishna is situated within our heart as the super soul. So as soon as we begin to serve him, as soon as we begin to please him with a real intention, he reciprocates. He knows everything that's going on. You can't hide anything from him. It's useless to try. So simply serve Krishna sincerely and you will see immediately you'll experience Krishna's reciprocation. And Krishna's reciprocation is better than anybody. Huh? I mean, we may think, oh, you know, if this cute person over here uh, likes us, then we'll get some happiness. So I'll do something nice, you know, send flowers or something like that. And then, uh, you know, I'll get their affection and their love and then I'll be happy. This is a nice plan. But like most material plans, it's actually very imperfect. And even if you get the result, it's always temporary. Huh? And it's full of flaws also. Huh? The man next door that, that owns this cabin and married this cute little Chilean girl. Huh? Very nice. But this morning, she, I heard her yelling. <laughs> <laughs> And then the next minute he comes out and he's got his power saw and he's going, and he's doing all this stuff. Uh, he's on the honeydew program. <laughs> <laughs> so material love always has a price. That we have to give up our self-determinism. We have to give up our peace of mind. And somebody else's will is imposed on ours. See? But surrendering to Krishna is not like that exactly. We think, oh, if I surrender to Krishna, then I have to give up so many things. Well, you have to give up your nonsense. Yeah. Give up the cause of your suffering. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just like we were talking about nectar of devotion. Nectar of devotion says, the first thing that happens when you engage in devotional service is that you become happy. Why? Because the first thing that happens when you engage in devotional service is your spiritual master says, give up meat-eating, illicit sex, intoxication, and gambling. And these are the cause of your unhappiness. Try to understand. Karma. Karma means cause and effect. So if you're suffering now, it means in your previous life you did something nonsense that is causing you to suffer now. And if you continue doing nonsense in this life, then in the next life, you're going to be suffering. That's karma. So if you stop doing the things that cause suffering, then the suffering will stop. It's so simple. The thing is, people think by doing this sinful activity, then I'll enjoy and that enjoyment will mitigate the suffering that I'm feeling. Huh? It will dilute the suffering. Huh? Just like if I have uh, some, uh, what? some nasty, dirty stains on the floor. Then I pour a bunch of water on the floor and scrub it. Maybe I'll dilute the stains. Huh? If the nasty stuff is still there, but now it's diluted. I'll put some soap and some bleach, and I'll the, take the brush, and it becomes diluted. The dirt is still there. The grease, the stain, is the, the, the stuff is still there. But now it's been diluted, and I can easily somehow wash it away, and it'll be tolerant, tolerable. So people are thinking like that. But actually, that same activity that we think of as enjoyment is the cause of our suffering later on. In other words, it's bad karma. Vikarma. Vikarma means prohibited actions. Those things that should not be done. Those come under four classifications. Meat eating, illicit sex, gambling, and intoxication. Those four things cause all of our suffering. And as soon as we stop doing those things, then our suffering will stop too.
maybe it won't stop right away. You know, just like if the fan is going and I, I unplug the fan, then it takes a little while to for the momentum to gradually decrease. So similarly, the momentum of our karma, which is established by many, many lifetimes of nonsense activities, is going to take some time to decrease. But for sure, we have to stop committing those sinful activities before it's going to even reduce at all. Then, on top of that, if we perform devotional service to Krishna, the happiness that we get from interacting with Krishna, well, you just ask any of my disciples. Go on, post on the, post on the forum, or send them an email. You ask any of my disciples who are chanting 64 rounds. <laughs> 